Hello, welcome to our first practical chapter within this mini course. And we're going to be using both Canva and Squarespace in this particular example. And what we're going to try and do is better frame our hero unit on our website. So here, this is for Greening & Co, which is one of the templates which will soon be on our Squarespace template store. And what I found here is that the zoomed in a little bit too much. We're not seeing enough of the photo, which means that it's not as framed as well as it could be. So that's what we're going to look at. What we're going to try and do is reduce the width of the image, meaning that we can see more. But we'll also be adding a gradient either side so it fits better within this letterbox mode that we can see here. So I'm going to jump over to Canva and we're going to first of all create a new custom size and a custom design. This is already logged in and instead of picking a template, I'll click on custom size and now we can click on 2200 by 1000 width. I've pre-entered that in, but that's what we're looking for. Roughly that size, 2200 by 1000 pixels. That makes sure it's big enough so we don't lose any quality on large screens, but also not too large that the file size is going to be enormous. So now we've got our banner in place. We now need to choose the perfect photo to fit in there. I don't have a copy of the existing one, but it's a good opportunity to try a few different options as well. So I'm going to go to the photos and I'm going to search for small business. And we've got a few different options here. This chap is rather happy, but we've got a few things that's going to make it more of a challenge. Even though he's positioned nice and off center, which will help, there's quite a lot of reflections in this photo that could be distracting. Also, it's cropped in quite close, so when we need to enlarge it to roughly the size we want, so there's only minimal spacing either side in our template, we're cropping in quite a lot. This could work, but it's not optimal. Looking at some of the other options here, this one could work, but they're cropped in a little bit tight into there. So I'm going to go with this one instead. Now with this particular photo, we can enlarge it quite a bit without any loss of quality. And lock it to the center. And because there aren't many telltale giveaway signs, we could probably flip this horizontally, meaning we've got our chap who's blurred out in the background. And that's where we could put a text on there. I'm a little old fashioned. I like the text flowing from the left. There's nothing wrong with having the text on the right side of the hero, but from the left is where I want to keep that flow going through on multiple pages in this particular case. So I'm going to flip that image horizontally. And even though it'll look rather weird when you first look at it, don't panic too much. We could then go on to elements and search for gradients. Now, some of these will be free, some will be paid, but I have a real problem, mainly because the gradient I use doesn't always come up first result on here, and it takes me an age to find it. Also, it doesn't give me the entire control I'm looking for. So I found a tool under angrytools.com forward slash gradient forward slash image. We're going to use this tool to convert a web gradient that we can select in the slider and download it as a transparent PNG, meaning that the gradient will overlay the photo and it will blend into the photo itself. So I'm going to edit up this particular photo. So I'm going to delete that color, take the white over, and I'm going to make this white as well. But we could change that color to choose what color we want to blend in. And then I'm going to change the alpha or the opacity of that second color. So now what we have is white going into transparent left to right. Oh, it's actually going on an angle at the moment. So I'm going to change it to zero for the angle. That would have been easier when it was it's still easy to see. Now we can see a solid white here 
going into this checkerboard, which is transparent there. So those are the settings I'm looking for. Angle zero, color we choose for each side, having the alpha on the second side in as zero. And now we're going to leave the width at 200, but change the height to 1000 to match the height of our image. And now we can download our image. And just test it. Because it's white on a white background, that's why we're not seeing anything at the moment. So we just have to trust that that's working as we intend to. I'm now going to choose another photo, another image where I'm going to go with not quite black, just a dark charcoal. We'll try that as well then. So once I've got one, I'm going to copy the color settings. And one interesting with gradients, if we leave the white in, it'll leave kind of a white haze over top of it. So I'm going to choose the same color, the second side, side as well, which will give a cleaner gradient. I suppose you have to trust me on that one. And I'm going to download that one with the same other settings in place, same angle, still linear gradient, and download that one. Now, the good thing is here, if you want to use it on multiple pages, you just download in this graphic once and you've got it always to reuse in future. So now I'm going to go to uploads and upload those two gradients. You can rename them if you want. And then we're going to drop them in to our page. So the white one. Drop it in place, then enlarge it. And there we go. A nice smooth gradient blending in from the left. You notice I didn't create a second one because I should be able to copy and paste and then flip that horizontally. Create the same effect on the right. Now we've got a wider template and then blend with the two sides blending in over the image. What I can do now is duplicate that and remove those gradients. And this is where I go back to the image maker. Now it's given me RGB options. So this is where I could use the Color Picker Chrome extension, which I'll leave a link for you. And I can just select that so I can get that six digit hexadecimal value for it copied to the clipboard as shown here. That means now I can change this background. So if you go with black or white, if you're unsure, that will get the results you need. But if you want to put an individual color as the background, you can then use the color tool here and paste it in. So we've got two quite extreme examples here. So when we go and put in our next gradient in, we've got two quite strikingly different effects. So I can just nudge it using the arrows on the keyboard to get into position. And I could always double up on it. Just move it in if I feel I need more of a fluid gradient going through. So there we go. We've got two different approaches. The white might end up being the better of the two. And we could always double up, as I said. This is an effect you could really play around with if you want to have a theme carrying through. Because the beauty of this is once we've created it with one photo, we can now go to find more photos and duplicate this effect. This lady might be too far off center, but we'll try it anyway.
I'm going to send it to the back, remove this existing photo, and then we might just need to bring it in crop left and right. I could probably bring it down a size again. As shown there. Now we've got a little bit too heavy there on the, the right. So I'll probably just soften that a little bit. But there are ways that you can play and blend in these gradients, but as a quick idea of how they could look, these are three examples that we could just drop in straight away as a banner. If you're proficient with Photoshop, that's where you could start blending it in using the brush tool and have a smoother gradient. But for those of you who don't have access to that type of software, this will do the job just nicely. Now we're going to download this first option as a PNG file. And we're just going to select page one. If we download more than one image, We'll save this as a JPEG because we don't want any transparency now we've created the file. If you select more than one, it'll save it as a zip file, meaning you need to unzip it before uploading. We'll now jump back to the website in our last step and we'll swap out that banner image. So we remove that, add a new image, upload the file. Select our image. It's good practice to rename it as well while we upload it, which I'll do in just a minute. Okay. So now our final steps, we can go into this background image, change the focal point. So we make sure we get most of our two in the shot. The reason at the moment why their heads are cropping is because of this site header overlaying it. That's causing the issue there. So what I would do in this case is go back to our Canva and actually bring them down further to allow for that extra space for that masthead to sit over top. So I'm just going to download that one one more time. Remove it or replace it with them further down. There might be a little bit of trial and error till you get to the settings that you want and then you know what you're working with. If you go with a transparent masthead, you don't need to worry about that because this would work into the masthead itself. But because we've got a white logo, this allows us to switch between light and dark images without any compensation. Whilst it's uploading the new image, we can adjust the opacity, the overlay. So this is obviously a darker overlay. We could switch the color pack to light, meaning that we have the gray text overlaying the image. With slightly less overlay. At this point, it becomes your choice. I struggle sometimes with those ones. The green doesn't quite work. The original option is the best for me personally. And then we could allow an effect as a final step. But I'm going to go with no effect on here. Okay, so now we've got our banner, which works beautifully in that format. We've got our masthead overlaying it, so we've taken the photo low enough down in there. We've got the gradient either side then, meaning that even if your photo hasn't been taken far enough back to work on this format, it works really well with this particular case. So that's just an initial example of how we can use Canva to create custom graphics for our Squarespace site. Check back in for the next chapter, we'll be going into more detail.